Hey guys, it's the plant doctor. This is our March what to do in the yard, in the garden video. This is part of a, a monthly segment that we've been doing here on the channel. Um, and we'll have a playlist that you can go back and look at each month, what I'm doing in my yard and what I suggest you do in your yard. So I'm in zone 7B, uh, but this could actually apply if you're in 8A or 7A, probably up to zone six and maybe down to 8B. Um, what I'm doing this time of year, you should more or less be able to do as well. The first thing I want to mention is in my area here in North Alabama, we have had a ton of rain. It has rained and rained and rained. So today is uh, February the 28th. Um, I just came in here to check on the greenhouse. It's Sneed State. Some of the, the beautiful plants that uh, my students have been growing throughout the semester and the baskets that are going in uh to the the city of boaz and i was like i have 10 minutes i'm gonna make a video for march real quick but the rain has been unbelievable uh here over the last week or two of the month of february in north alabama let's talk about pruning what you should and should not be pruning right now right now a good general rule of thumb is this don't prune Okay, uh, things like forsythia are in full bloom right now. They are in full glory. They are absolutely gorgeous right now. Uh, some of the camellias are still blooming. Um, so like uh, I've got a camellia debutante uh, that is blooming. So our camellia japonicas are blooming. And then our camellia sasanquas, they, they're done blooming. So if you know the difference between a sasanqua in a japonica you can probably go ahead and prune those uh sasanqua. sasanqua has a smaller leaf japonica has a larger leaf but for a, a good general rule of thumb is if your uh, camellias have already bloomed you can go ahead and prune them if they still have fl uh, floral buds on them or in the process of flowering do not prune them Things that have buds on them right now that you do not need to be pruning. Azaleas, rhododendrons, uh, certain types of hydrangeas. Uh, so I noticed that oak leaf hydrangea, the, the foliage buds are starting to open up on those around here. Don't go pruning them right now. Uh, you can prune your limelight hydrangeas if you know the difference between a limelight and oak leaf, you can prune those. Do not prune things like Nico blue hydrangeas. So uh, hydrangea macrophylla, anything in that species like Nico blue, do not be pruning right now because you're gonna cut off your floral buds, you're gonna cut off your vegetative buds as well. Things like boxwood, we can go ahead and prune. Um, the flowers are insignificant. Yes, they have flowers, but people do not grow boxwood for the flowers. So if you want to go ahead and prune your boxwood, you can, you can prune those. But in general, right now, this time of year, wait until whatever shrub you want to prune is done flowering. And after it flowers, you can go ahead and, and prune then. Things are going to change a lot over the next four to six weeks. Uh, we're entering springtime. Uh, this coming up week, we've got several days in the 70s. I noticed I have a saucer magnolia in my yard. Those floral buds are starting to open up. Um, just outside of the greenhouse here, there's a star magnolia and it has been blooming for a couple of weeks now. So those early spring bloomers, our forsythia, our star magnolias, our saucer magnolias, they're already starting to bloom and things are going to progress very, very quick as we go through March and we go through April. One thing I would encourage you to do if you haven't already is to go ahead and get your mulch out, uh, your pine straw, your pine bark mulch, whatever you're using. That's going to do a couple things for you going into spring. Number one, it's going to help with weed suppression. Um, so you put that layer of mulch over the top and the weeds will have a harder time coming through that. And number two, uh, it'll help you with water retention. So if we hit a drought period, that layer of mulch on top of your beds is going to help you retain some of that water that you wouldn't otherwise be able to retain. 
while we're talking about weeds, let's go ahead and talk about the three main weeds that you're going to see late February going into March. Uh, the first one is chickweed. So chickweed is going to have a little white flower on top of it. Uh, the second one is henbent. So henbent typically has a little purple flower on top. Uh, the B-roll film that I shot did not have the flower on it, but you should be familiar. If you see little purple flowers in the yard, that's henbent. And then the third one's poana. So poana has the little white seed heads on top, and it looks more like a grass and not a broadleaf weed. Uh, if you only have a few of those, an easy thing to do is this just go hand pick them they're shallow rooted and as much rain as we've had in our area this week they come up really easy um, if you're dealing with a more prolific outbreak uh, one thing that you can do if you did not get your pre-emergence down in february uh, is this uh, spray it with a product that has trimec so trimec uh, has uh, three products in it, 2,4-D, uh, dicamba, and I forget the last one. But the main thing we're after really is anything that has 2,4-D in it. I'll try to give a couple of picture examples of labels that you might see um, in the Retail Garden Center. One of the comments I had on last month's video is I typically use the, the trade names of chemicals and not how they're labeled in like a Lowe's or a Home Depot. Uh, I'm going to try to do better at doing that. So I'm going to try to put a few pictures in over here, products that you can put on the yard. And as always, use those products exactly as directed. Make sure you're mixing that up in the correct ounces per gallon and that you're wearing the correct PPE. Although most things that you buy at Lowe's and Home Depot, the PPE is like gloves and long pants. It's not a big deal um, to, to go out and just spot spray a few of those areas that, that you need to be uh, spot spraying there. Another thing that I want to bring up, we've got so much to talk about this month, I had to make a list. This is literally a to-do list. Uh, divisions. If you have plants that you want to transplant or divide, let's go ahead and get that done here in the next couple of weeks. I've noticed that my hostas are starting to develop pips, the, the little buds coming up out of the ground. It's easy to see where the hostas are at right now. If you'll just pull back your pine straw and your mulch, go ahead, divide those out. Same thing with daylilies. My daylilies are up maybe two or three inches. I noticed the Stella de Oro's are starting to come up just a little bit. Now's the perfect time. If you wanna go in there and divide those out, uh, plant them somewhere else in the yard, uh, gift them to a friend or a family member. Uh, now's the perfect time to be doing your plant divisions and also if you want to transplant a shrub we're getting on the very tail end of transplanting so if you want to move like a holly or some or a, a tree that's still dormant now's the time to be doing that but don't wait i wouldn't wait much longer we're going to hit these 70 degree days here in the next week to 10 days and those buds that are swelled up are going to leaf out uh, so be very careful, careful and get a lot of root ball if you do decide to actually transplant a shrub. Uh, One thing I want you guys to be very aware of, over the next month or so, you're going to start to see the retail garden centers have a lot of annuals in and around the garden center. For our area, please do not plant those until like somewhere around April 15th. What I would encourage you to do is let's get to April the 10th, look at the 10 day forecast. If they're not calling for a frost or a freeze over the next 10 days, then start to put some stuff out. Uh, the stuff that people are gonna put out in March, there's a very high probability they're gonna have to turn right back around and go buy that stuff again because we're gonna have a frost or a freeze in late March or early April. So, so be aware of that, that that can happen. Uh, a few other things I wanna talk about that aren't directly related to plants, but make our life easier as we get into April and May and June in the summer. If we do a little bit of work on this now, it's going to make life so much easier when it's 95 degrees and 100% humidity and we don't feel like doing this. Let's talk about equipment maintenance. If you have not 
sharpened your lawnmower blades, if you have not changed the oil in your lawnmower, uh, do that, okay? Go through, uh, if you have access to a spark plug wrench, unscrew your spark plug, make sure your spark plug's clean, there's not a lot of black buildup on it. Change your air filter, or if you have an air filter that you can clean, clean your air filter. Do those things to your mower. Do the same things to your weed eaters and your stick edgers and blowers and all that stuff. Let's go ahead and do that. In particular, run a little bit of gas through your uh, weed eaters and your stick edgers and your blowers, all that stuff that might run on a two stroke. I know a lot of people are transitioning to the lithium power, uh, li excuse me, lithium powered battery stuff. Uh, I just went to a sprayer that has lithium and I love it. It's been great so far. I'll try to leave a link here to my product review for that. Um, and as my two strokes begin to go out on me, I think I'm gonna go total lithium battery for my yard. It's just so convenient. But if you still have a two stroke engine uh, weed eater, run a little gas through it, make sure the carburetor doesn't need to be cleaned out either. Okay, because a lot of times when we let gas sit over the winter, uh, it can get stale, it gets in a carburetor, and it just the carburetor isn't acting right. Uh, you can run some Stabile or some carb cleaner uh, through your, your system there. Just spray some in the air filter and it'll help cycle some of that out and get your two-stroke engines running properly. If you do a little bit of work now, while the weather's in the 60s and the 70s and we have some nice days, it's gonna save you some headache in June and July uh, doing some of that stuff. Guys, thanks so much for watching The Plant Doctor. I'm hoping these monthly how-to videos are helping you in your yard. If you have questions, please leave them down in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you guys. Thank you so much for the subscriptions as of today. We're almost up to 1,700 subscribers now. I never thought that would be possible. Uh, and that's because of you guys. And I'll, I'll do my best to try to continue to bring quality content to the channel. Until next time, this is The Plant Doctor.